So I got all eights and nines of my GCSEs, and I think I did this without revising a crazy amount. Now, hold on a minute. Before you say, Adoka, why is there a bunch of long form study of me's on your channel? First of all, I didn't do those every single day. I generally did those like once a week or once a fortnight or whenever I had to try and get a study of me out. There's a reason I only did them that often, that's because entertainment. I mainly did them for the channel. I saw it more as a job because they would get views and I would technically get paid for it rather than seeing it as something strenuous. So I only did those like once a fortnight, maybe once a week, or just whenever I had to upload a study with me. However, apart from that though, I didn't actually do that much revision. I did consecutive work over a longer period of time, but I don't think this was too difficult to do. Doing an hour or two every day leading up to exam season isn't that hard to do, and most people could do it. However, I managed to do this and still get all eights and nines. How? How is this possible? Well, through the tips that I'm going to mention in this video. So I know a large portion of my audience is going to 11, which is why I'm making this video. And maybe this will bring in some new viewers. And if you are, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, like this video, because I'll be making some great GCSE content as well as A-level content. I don't want to waste your time. So each tip has been timestamped down below in case you want to skip around. Now, my first tip and a tip I don't think gets talked about often enough is know your direction you have to know the direction you want to head in with your gccs because there's no point in doing something without knowing what it's going to lead to it's just like if you're maybe standing at a train station and you don't know what train you're going to get on you don't know where you're going to and you don't know what platform to be on there's just absolutely no point in doing that you need to figure out where you want to go you need to plan your trip just like you need to plan why you want to revise and plan why you want to do well in your gccs because just saying getting a good job is it's not good enough. Why do you want to get a good job? What is that job going to be? How are you going to get there? You need to know why you're doing things because doing things without a cause is not going to help you in the long term. You're going to get bored. Personally, I think a lot about what I want to do with my future. I knew heading into GCSEs why I wanted to get the good grades, how I'm going to get the good grades, and I knew how this will basically help me in the future. This brings me on to my next tip, and it's figuring out how to revise. Now, my channel is full of content on how you can revise. However, that may not be suitable for you. My methods that I say on the channel have a lot of evidence to show that they work, but sometimes they may not work for you and that's okay. An easy way to find out if your method is working is look back on topic tests that you've done well in, look back on exams that you've done well in. What methods did you use to revise for those exams? Because I'm guessing those are gonna be the most effective methods. A little tip that I'd wish I'd known sooner, especially when it came to GCSEs and just revising in general, is that you should focus on understanding the content rather than memorizing it. Now, this is something that not a lot of people actually talk about. And it's incredibly important because if you understand the topic more, it would actually be interesting to you. It's far easier to recall other parts that link to the topic rather than if you're just memorizing a fact. It's incredibly difficult to do well in an exam if you're just memorizing facts because in the exam, they usually just don't ask you the question straight up. They word it differently. They add things into it to confuse you. That's why having a deeper level of understanding with a subject is so important. I think this helped me a lot in computer science, especially one of my mates is great at computer science and he has a very big passion for it. So whenever I needed help with things like pseudocode, I went to him because he could teach me how to understand it rather than just memorize it. It's better to talk to someone or watch a video or something like that rather than just memorize things straight away. So try to actually understand what you're learning. This brings me on to my next tip, which is study smarter, not harder. I speak a bunch about this on my channel and this leads me back to Active Recall. I love Active Recall. I've talked so much about it and a lot of people still don't understand what it is. And it's basically just a fancy way of saying, test yourself. You want to be able to actively recall that information that you've learned in a lesson, take it out of your brain and write it down on the paper. That's pretty much just what Active Recall is. It's not anything fancy, it's testing yourself. And you can incorporate Active Recall for doing things like past papers, answering practice questions, writing flashcards, doing things like blurting. There is so many ways to incorporate Active Recall. And Active Recall is the way I got all eights and nines. Like I'm telling you right now, that's the only way I got all eights and nines. The main method I incorporated Active Recall with is by using Anki. Now I know I'm 
got to make an Anki video. It will happen at some point. But if not, just use a Skillshare class. I used Ali Abdal's Skillshare class to learn how to use Anki, which actually segues quite nicely into the sponsor of this video that is Skillshare themselves. If you have been living under a rock and you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is the best way to learn anything online. Skillshare has a wide range of classes from things like photography to video editing to photo editing. Now, I learned how to video edit in Final Cut Pro using Ali Abdal's class. And now I have over 43,000 subscribers on YouTube. So you tell me if it works. There's also classes on things like Productivity by Thomas Frank, which I love. MKBHD even has a class on Skillshare. There is so much you can learn using Skillshare. I want to make a Skillshare class in the future as well, all about how I did well in my GCSEs. Skillshare is just such an amazing platform. Rather than paying for one single course on photography, a single course on video editing, a single course on doing well in school, you have it all bundled into one platform. The best part about it is that you can get a free premium trial using my link in the description. So if you want to learn how to use Anki, if you want to learn how to edit like me in Final Cut Pro, or if you just want to learn how to cook a better steak, check out the link in my description for a free premium trial with Skillshare. With an annual subscription that is less than Netflix and is arguably more useful. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. Let's get back to the video. Now getting back to studying smarter, not harder. During exams, I wasn't even revising a crazy amount. I mean, before exams, just continue throughout year 11, I was revising about two to five hours daily. Five hours would be like during exams, like peak season. But usually two hours, three hours would be pretty much good enough to do well in all my topic tests. I did this by waking up in the morning, doing Anki an hour, then coming home and doing an hour's worth of revision. But I didn't do anything crazy. I didn't dilly dally. I just got on with it. I did past papers. I did practice questions. I made Anki cards. I did active forms of revision. These are the revision methods that helped me the most. If you're just spending an hour passively doing revision, then you're probably not gonna do well in your exam, no matter how long you do. So with active recall, you can actually save yourself time and do better than if you were spending more time doing passive forms of revision. You may be saying, oh, what if I don't know the topic? Well, then don't do a practice question. Learn the topic first. Use videos, use booklets, use your teachers. There's so many resources available online and through your teachers. It's actually ridiculous how easy it is to get good grades. The next tip is discuss the things with you with the people around you. So a simple thing to do is when you get home, talk to your parents about what you learned that day. Talk to your brother about what you learned that day. Talk to anyone about, talk to your teddy about what you learned that day. Just talk to someone about what you learned that day. It's better if it's an actual person because they can ask questions. But I did this during my exam season. I'll always go home and talk to my mom about biology because she loves learning about that kind of stuff. So whenever I came home learning about something new in biology, I'll talk to my mom about it. And by doing this, it was incredible. It meant that she asked questions and it made me think deep about the topic. She learned some thing and it also meant that I'm actively recording the information from school that day and I'm actually doing revision while kind of having fun and interacting with my mom. Now the next tip is when should you start revising? This is a question that is constantly being asked and it matters on how your school do things. So in my school, we did mocks in November. So I pretty much started revising since the beginning of year 11 because I had to do my exams in November and I had to make sure I understood all the content. So figure out when your exams are and work from there. I like to allocate about two to three months before an exam to revise properly for it. So figure that out and then you can figure out when to start revising. But a good recommendation would just be start in year 11. Like you don't need to revise a crazy man in 10. If at all, just revise for your topic test. But year 11 is when it starts to get a little bit more serious try just do a little bit every day because the earlier you start the easier it will be later on for example if from the beginning of term you're already doing like an hour or two every single day come exam season it'll be really easy to just keep on doing that consistently it is said to take about 27 days to form a habit so if you can just keep revising consistently just an hour and a bit every day that adds up and that will pay dividends in the future my sixth tip is use your teachers. Your teachers are there to help you. Personally, I struggle with this a lot. I thought I could do everything on my own, which is a bad mindset to have. You need to use your teachers. There's a reason they're there. They know the information, they're qualified to be there, and they have a very deep understanding of the topic. So actually go and talk to your teachers. There's things like after school clubs. We had things like Teams meetings. They were helpful because you can talk to someone, you can ask specific questions. There's only so much a video can teach you. You may have questions of your own, and that's why having your teachers is great. This is especially important, I know, when it comes to A-levels. 
so I'm definitely going to be talking to my teachers a lot. It may be nagging them, but you know, you're trying to do well in your exams. Again, on a similar is that always be asking questions in lessons. I definitely wish I did this more. I thought I could do it independently by just reading a textbook, watching lessons. No, you can't use your teachers, please. It's not very difficult. <laughs> now, my final tip for today is structure your revision appropriately. This is something that's hard for me to tell you how to do specifically. Everyone struggles with some subjects more than they do with others, so it's hard. But I think a good place to start with this is to prioritize the subjects that you're worst at and that you want to do well at. For example, I was quite good at sciences, so I didn't do as much science revision as I did compared to something like computer science. So I dedicated more time to certain subjects when revising. You can do this by listing out the priorities and then figure out from there. To figure out what to revise and when to revise, use a retrospective revision time tip. Now I have a video about that on my channel. It's kind of old, however, it's still very valid. Just a quick rundown of it is basically you write all the topics that you have for a subject in one column, then you write the date you do the topic and then from there you can work out when to do another topic or the same topic again because you can see maybe I only did that topic like two weeks ago but I need to get a better understanding of it so I do it again you write the date you did it and then from there you can figure out what topics to do next sounds complicated the way I said it just check out the video trust me it's a lot easier but figure out how you're going to be doing your revision and prioritize the subject you worse that that you still want to do well in because you want to try and do well in all your subjects and the kind of last bonus unofficial tip is just have fun. Don't spend all your time curled up in your room because GCSEs aren't everything. I wish I'd known that because I kind of thought like GCSEs is the be all and the end all, but it's really not. GCSEs is just a small portion of your life. I finished them. I see how little of a part they play in the in the grand scheme of things. Honestly, just have fun. I think GCSEs are more like a test to see if you can actually revise and do well. So see as that, but also have fun. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe because it would mean a lot. We're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Like and comment any tips you have for maybe other people if you're already going into year 12. Give some tips for the year 10s going into year 11 because I'm sure they would love it. If you want to know more about anything else I've mentioned in this video, I've probably done a video on it on my channel. If not, just DM me on Instagram or put a comment down and I'll try to reply to as many as possible. Don't forget to subscribe and have a productive week.